Growing up the way I did, A Nightmare on Elm Street has just always been one of those franchises, right? Just like Halloween and Friday the 13th, I've known about them pretty much as long as I've known anything else. And, but at the same time, I also have not really had many personal experiences with them because, like, people talking about them so much online and stuff that I basically know. Like the full story, or at least the main story, even though I haven't experienced those films for myself, and、uh, that's just how they were for a really, really long time until recently, when I finally decided to start watching it. And the first one I thought、uh, would would be a good one to start with would be A Nightmare on Elm Street, of course, directed by the legendary Wes Craven, and、um, it's pretty much. What I expected, but also at the same time, didn't want it to be. But before we get into that,、um, the reason why I decided to start with this one is because, like, growing up, well, as about as far back as I can remember,、uh, Freddy Krueger has like always been the scariest like horror movie villain for me, or just the first like film character that I. Remember being actually scared of, and well, that quickly faded away. Of course, as I got older and just saw how goofy the rest of the franchise was after the first film, and that's pretty much like a good description of how I feel of about this first film. But of course, I'm you know let's you know let's just stop wasting time and just head get straight into the review because、uh, I don't have that much to say. Except like during the end of the film, so、uh, yeah.、Um, of course, I like to start with the negatives and end off with the positives because I like to end things on a positive note. So,、uh, and and also, you know, like just to be fair, I do have more positive things to say about the film than I do negative. So, it just makes sense to start in the lower section. So the first negative that I, well, the first and only negative that I have about A Nightmare on Elm Street, nineteen eighty four. Is that the movie is too predictable slash generic? Now,、um, this film, you know, it's just just like Halloween and just like Friday the Thirteenth. They basically popularized the slasher genre. They're not the first like actual slasher films. Halloween is arguably the first slasher film, or at least it birthed the slasher films. But whatever, all right. They basically popularized. The slasher genre,、um, a nightmare on Elm Street. You know, more notably for the supernatural side of things. You know, that's the most supernatural of those. You know, like the three main horror movie villain stuff, and and yeah.、Um, so, just the one thing that I was afraid of was that this movie was gonna feel really generic to me because I've seen all of like. Uh, well, at least a lot of the films that it spawned after its, you know, popularity and stuff, and、uh, yeah, that that is unfortunately how I felt. It it felt pretty generic. It felt,、um, you know, just very predictable all the way through. Even though I had never actually seen it, because so many films copy it, and I've seen those films because they're newer, and、um, yeah, you know.、Um, And, and and the film just just kind of went exactly how I felt it was gonna go, and there were just no surprises, no you know like like no actual jump scares that worked,、um, you know,、um, you know it's 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 not bad, but it's just very very predictable. It's very very you know, it's just like beat for beat. Exactly what you think it might be. If you've like ever seen any、um, like regular slasher movie, like 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 one that isn't really good, but 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 one that's not bad either, it's just kind of in the middle. Then you basically know exactly how this film is gonna go just from a brief synopsis of it, just like me. Right. So that's my only negative about the film is that it feels predictable and it feels. Generic because there are no surprises, there are no, you know, big jump scares. There, there, there are no big twists and turns. It's just very straightforward, very 
pedestrian, just very, you know, it's, it's just a very regular film. And of course, I'm sure back in 1984, when it originally came out, you know, that it, that it, that it certainly um, was more of a surprise and, 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 and much more of a, you know, um, enjoyable film experience overall. But for someone like me, you know, who is a part of Gen Z, who, you know, born in, in, in 2002 after way after all of the films that the original Nightmare on Elm Street inspired, you know, it, it's just, it just feels regular to me. So, uh, yeah, that's my one and only negative about the film is that it feels generic and it feels, you know, just like a very regular slasher movie. But now let's get into the positive stuff, all right? My first positive is the special effects are good for the most part. All right, and for um, especially supernatural horrors, um, especially during the time period that 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 this came out in, they they relied heavily on practical effects because you know because CGI and stuff and just and just animation mixing with live action in general just didn't really you know get the job done that well. So um, the film does rely mostly on. Um, practical effects to get across its horror and stuff and it does a really good job at that really really good job at that um i especially like the um what was it the like uh pool of blood like like the you know like the the literal first kill of the movie when um what's her name uh amanda weiss's character what is her name goodness gracious i cannot remember her name but she's the first one to go uh what is her name Amanda Weiss's character, uh, Tina, Christina, Tina Gray, right? Um, she's the first death, and honestly, the uh, and, and honestly, like the like the best death of the film, in in my opinion, like by far, nothing comes even close to that. And you know, of course, you know, like all these years after, pretty much like what is it, like forty, like forty years after the the release of the film of of course to to our eyes that that are you know basically used to seeing the behind the scenes and and, and knowing how these special effects the, the at least these old special effects work in films it doesn't come across as powerful because we know how it's done and, and we can even just take one look at it and know exactly how they made this special effect work at the time right um but you know, but but still looking at it in, in context and, and you know and and even with fresh new eyes that are very very experienced in horror, uh, it, it still it still impressed me a lot. You know, it, it really got the uh, the tenseness and just the confusion of the scene across, like with her and and her boy and her boyfriend in the room, how she just starts levitating and basically just just getting like ripped apart everywhere on, 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 on the walls and the ceiling and, and on the floor everywhere, you know, and just like no one knowing what to do and, and just being like really confused and scared of the whole situation. It, it really worked well. And, and honestly, like, I, I think that that whole scene was just like the best, the best moment of actual horror in the film. You know, if, even though I, I don't find it particularly scary or, or anything like that, but it's it's still it still worked in my opinion. So yeah, a uh, really really great scene, and of course the special effects on Freddy on Freddy Krueger himself was also done well. Um, and yeah, just like the all the special effects in the in, in the entire movie like really really work. I don't have to go through every single one of them. Um, although the, the the one that that didn't work was the one near the end that. Basically, everyone talks about as being a, a, a bad special effect is when, um, you know, in, in the end, spoilers, just in case you haven't seen the film, where um, Freddy reaches his hand through the um, family's front door window and pulls in the mother through, like, the like the small glass window at the top of the door. It looks so goofy and just kind of out of place, honestly. You know, even, like, even, even though that... You know, like e even though at that point the film was going in a very uh, goofy direction, 
Uh, but anyway, that, that's, that's basically the only bad special effect that I can think about. Everything else might be a bit dated, but at least in, in my opinion, it still worked to, you know, it still worked in the film's benefit and, it, and they were still basically good effects. So yeah, good special effects. Uh, my second positive would have to be good pacing. This movie um, knows that it does not have a, a lot of substance to it and it's basically just following a formula of uh, just setting up characters to die and stuff you know and and it's and and, and it's it's very self aware it's it, it it knows what it is and just how dumb these these situations are so they know well to keep the film's runtime really really short it's just a minute over an hour and a half it's basically an hour and a half and that's the perfect time for a movie like this because there's just not much else going on i i i don't know why i thought like with this being I am I'm pretty sure the the most praised of the um of the nightmare on Elm Street films. I'm pretty sure this is the most praised on, on, unless I'm mistaken. I I just thought that there was gonna be more substance to it, more things pertaining to the story and, and the characters and stuff. But there just wasn't. There wasn't any sort of insight into into the characters. Um I mean like uh, there there's a, a little bit into Nancy's family, like her relationship with her father and her alcoholic mother um but other than that there's not much else worth of substance in the film and you know of course with this being a slasher film and, and especially an 80s slasher film i i can't expect a lot but i don't know i i just i just got the idea um but at, at least from hearing people talk about the film that 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 there was more going on story-wise but I, I guess I was just mistaken I guess but yeah uh, but but yeah still I, I got off topic just now sorry uh, it's it's still got good pacing to it it's still a really well paced film all of the kills happen when I think they happen all of the moments of uh, confusion and, and tension and just horror happen really well after each other they're all really well timed and well paced it, it nothing ever feels like it's going on for too long or going on for too short it just knows what it wants to be it knows what it's come to accomplish and it just does that and gets the job done and leaves which is you know the most that that you could ask of any film honestly so yeah good pace in my opinion and last but not least we have my uh best positive about the film i think pretty much um it's got good acting for the most part especially heather and i, and I hope i'm saying the, the name right heather langenkamp and robert england um of course we know robert england plays freddy krueger he's a total horror icon pretty much the um, i think i i would honestly argue that he's the most recognizable figure in like any horror movie ever at this point because he's played the character so many times and, and done such a a great job you know like throughout every every change and, and thing that that the character has has been through over over the years he's yeah he's done a really good job of, of always playing the character people always praise that aspect of the films no matter how goofy or or just plain old bad that they got he always got praise and he always was well deserved of it and in this first installment even though he's not in it as much as i thought that he would be or as menacing as i thought that he would be he still does a great job here of getting the horror elements across and but in my opinion the best character in the film and the best piece of acting honestly in the film is from heather Langenkamp as Nancy, who is a very, very iconic character in horror film history, um, and you know be, be, because like she's, um, is she one of the first Fire Girls? But anyway, anyway, yeah. But she's a very uh, significant and a very iconic Final Girl in horror movie history. Very, very popular character and really well played by Heather Langenkamp. Everyone else in the film, I'm um, not gonna lie, their acting was kind of meh. Um, <laughs> Nancy's mother, um, 
I, I cannot tell if she's overacting or underacting. I might argue more along the sides of underacting because she just... <laughs> because I, I I get that she's supposed to be an, an alcoholic, right? But at least give a crap about the performance of an alcoholic. Like, please give a crap. Unless the... I mean, I don't know. Un, un, unless she was told to actually act like that. I'm, cause I'm not sure. I... I just wish if she had given more to that character of being the alcoholic mother. But anyway, um, everyone else, John Saxon, you know, he's, he's a great actor, but um, in here he's kind of, you know, he's he's not in it much, and 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 even when he is, he's just doing an okay job in my opinion. He's fine, honestly. Uh, Johnny Depp, um, yeah, one of. Like, another big reason why I wanted to watch this film is because it's Johnny Depp's film debut. And, um, unfortunately, he's not that good in the film. <laughs> like, you could clearly see that, yeah, like, yeah, this this is a very, very early role for him. This is this is before he got better with um, stuff like, uh, what's it called again? What is the name of that show? Uh, like, where, like, where he's the undercover cop. Uh, anyway, but, yeah, w- whatever that thing is, um, he really got better in in that show and of course in his later career but um starting off here he was not that good and and i can say the same for everyone else like um like uh, rod the, the the what is it nick horn who plays rod lane yeah he did not do a good job either amanda weiss uh honestly didn't do a good job either um i mean like like no one was really like was you know they're they're not like significantly bad like like stand out wow this is such a bad character kind of bad they're 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 just kind of like yeah this is this is bad acting and at least in my opinion I've, at least that's how i felt about it but yeah none of it ruins the film but definitely they really just do a good job of making um heather stand out as a, as a standout character and thankfully her as the protagonist you know and just the person who we see most of the time in the film does a really great job in her role so yeah definitely a lot of praise is very deserved on her part and um yeah that's that's pretty much it for my um critical points on the film although there 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 is one more thing um one thing that i've always heard when when people talk about a a nightmare on elm street is the is how the move how the movies got goofier and goofier as time went on at least the at least the original series of films in the 80s and 90s because you know like like I don't know, just just the way how everyone always talked about it, it it was like oh it started off like all nice and serious and you know and, 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 and freddy was like actually scary in the first one but then they ruined him when in, in the later films when they made him all goofy and stuff I, at least that's the vibe that i always got when people always talked about the film but honestly the best part of the film isn't even this the like actual scary parts the best part of the film is is actually the last third where you know like where they're like really wrapping things up everything is moving all fast paced and stuff and and nancy finally fi- finally gets the courage to um to uh try and kill freddy and she like lights him on like she goes full home alone and lights him on fire <laughs> and he's <laughs> running around screaming falling down steps and and getting hit in the face with paint cans and it's just and yeah it is it is a really goofy part of the film but and it's and and it and it was like genuinely funny like like i was i was surprised at how genuinely funny those moments were (laughs) because i you know like because before the last third they're pretty much playing it straight right freddy's meant to be an actually scary villain and like an actually scary monster but as soon as the third begins, it immediately goes into this home alone, like fast paced, you know, like the film needs to end in like 10 minutes kind of attitude where everything is being thrown at him and, and, and everyone's running all over the place and screaming and 
<laughs> on just like the dumbest decisions are being made in this moment she keeps yelling for her father through windows and stuff because like she finally got freddy outside of the dreams right and she's lit him on fire he's locked in the basement so like finally you know she's 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 gonna call her father and he's gonna come in and see that she wasn't lying and then and then he's gonna like shoot and kill freddy or, or whatever or arrest him maybe i don't know but yeah and uh, and it takes such a long time for him to cross the street because he's just kind of he's just kind of looking at her screaming like like everyone's just kind of looking at her like like oh she's she's this disturbed character who <laughs> who who needs mental help or something right and then and then her father finally runs across and they and, and then freddy breaks out of the basement and attacks the mother and she jumps on freddy and and then freddy like sucks in her mother into the dream world or whatever and 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 yeah it's just really fast paced really goofy and honestly very funny i'm not sure if they meant for it to be funny but if they did then 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 then, then that was just brilliant that that was really entertaining i i i can see why you know like I, at least looking at the last third why they went with a with the faster pace honestly i'm well well not a, i mean uh i mean it's sorry i mean a, a goofier pace and, and, and just a goofier less serious attitude with the later films even though i haven't seen them but people always say that they went with a with a goofier aspect with with those films compared to the first one if that is the case then looking at the last third of this film i can totally understand why they would do that because it is genuinely funny and it is honestly the most entertaining part of the movie because the, the scary stuff is fine you know it's it, it's fine and it's basically good but it's not as good as the last third which is goofy and funny so i totally understand why they would do that but yeah that, that those are all of my thoughts on a nightmare on elm street um honestly exactly exactly what i thought it was gonna be uh it had some bad acting uh you know the usual dumb really dumb stupid d decisions that people make in these old horror movies are made in this film all of them the whole falling down shtick the whole you know uh, characters getting killed after they have sex um characters being unaware of their surroundings characters following noises that they hear in in in, in the dark and and just like you know like always changing changing the rules with the monsters not even establishing rules with the monsters so that they can you know like make them invulnerable or just let the plot do whatever they want with them so yeah that just yeah it's just regular horror movie stuff and that's just how i feel about the entire film it's a very regular movie that last third is very very entertaining but um yeah the ending itself like like the actual as credits roll ending of the film is not that good honestly i uh, like um i don't know what i was expecting or what could have actually satisfied me more with and and with an ending for the film but you know i i can't think of anything better but what they gave us with the ending with them like like with her like you know still being in in freddy's clutches I, I i guess you would say um it, it it just wasn't a good enough ending in my opinion even though i can't think of a better one but whatever right so yeah that's that's just how i feel about the overall film um not bad you know um i i would i would go so far as to call it a good movie it's a good horror movie so yeah got some good acting uh, good special effects, uh, good pacing. It's it's a really short film, um, but it's just too predictable. Just too just too predictable for me to go back to it on my own qualms. Like I I would definitely watch this with a with some friends or something. But other than that, yeah, it's it's not getting a second watch out of it. So yeah, um, and I a Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it's just a good movie. If if I if I were to rate it, I would give it about. Uh, six out of ten six out of ten seems fair honestly because that third is really really entertaining so yeah um yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a decent movie overall so yeah
Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know when I upload next. This has been Fresh and Anti Exorcist, and I'll see you all next time. God bless.